Hello everyone and welcome to another Ask IoT series from IoT for All, the number one publication and resource for the Internet of Things. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, please feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel. It means a lot to us and to those that participate in, these, in this piece of content. Um, this series, for those of you who may be new to the series, is focused on picking higher level topics, higher level questions that are asked and come up on a daily basis, bringing on an expert to focus on that single topic and answer specific questions and things related to that topic, just to kind of build a bit more um, hyper-focused content to, to help you better understand what's going on in the space, better understand things about IoT, and just kind of contribute a lot more value to the industry at large. Um, today's episode, we have Robbie Hamblett, the CEO and president of Teal. They are an IoT networking company. Um, they have built a cloud native credentialing as a service platform that provides intelligent connectivity and networking solutions to IoT devices and network operators. You probably heard from Robbie before. He's been on the show many times. Um, great guest, a lot of value here. I think you'll get out of this episode. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is preparing for network upgrades and sunsets. So network sunsets impact millions of devices anytime they happen. Same with upgrades. Um, but how can companies really be preparing themselves on the IoT front and future proofing their deployment? So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Um, so if you've ever kind of heard of a network sunsetting or network upgrading, I'm sure what it means, what it kind of, how it impacts potential deployment that you have or may be having, um, this is the episode that you want to really pay attention to. So hope you enjoyed this episode uh, of the Ask IoT Show with Robbie Hamblett. Welcome, Robbie. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. It's great to be on the show again. Yeah, man. It's great to have you back. Um, so first thing I want to do, just for audience who may not be as familiar, do a quick introduction about yourself and Teal. Yeah, so my name is Robbie Hamlet. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Teal. My background was in ESIM engineering, which is where I kind of saw the problem that I wanted to solve. I wanted to make it easier for IoT devices to access networks and not just use, you know, the same roaming concepts or backdoors that the other solutions offer. Fantastic. Um, so today we're going to focus on one topic. We're going to focus on helping uh, talk to our audience about preparing for network upgrades and sunsets. So we know this is something that impacts the lives or the devices, uh, millions of devices on a regular basis when these things happen, whether it's an upgrade or a sunset itself, tell our audience how uh, an IoT company can prepare and kind of future proof their deployments for this kind of situation and why it's so important. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times when you're building a device, you're building for the networks that exist at that time and in that moment, and you're getting sold on the networks that exist in that time and at that moment. Um, so when you're, when you're accessing the network, you're getting, you know, an identity component, like a SIM card. Um, and you're saying like, I'm going to build a device. It's going to have 3g radios in it. I'm going to shop around all the carriers. It, a lot of times there isn't like an end of life, um, plan yeah. for their network at the time when they're actively selling it. Um, but then eventually you find out that the network's going to go down, you know, they're going to re, re uh, harvest that spectrum for 4g. They're going to, you know, give it up to some other project. Um, and then, you know, one by one, the other carriers start to follow through. Mm -hmm. um, so in general, the best best practice is just to build devices with as many bands as possible and not get too specialized to one type of network. So you always have an alternative technology to turn to. So rather than building something with just AT&T's 3G bands, you build something with T-Mobile's 3G bands as well so that you mm -hmm. can get T-Mobile's 3G access. If you could have built in, you know, a couple LTE bands at the start, even if you're not thinking about 5G today, including some of those bands so that when 4G gets harvested, right. you have you know a safe harbor in some of these 5G deployments, those ones will definitely extend life cycles. And it's very important for IoT devices to have long life cycles. Um, from there, like just, just then being able to access the network is the problem. If you're building with something like a SIM card from one carrier, you're not gonna be able to change right. that identity over time, even if your device does support those, those other bands. So. Biggest thing is just, you know, being being passionate. I'm always very passionate about the, the hardware that I pick, you know, the technology I mm -hmm. use. It's it's very uh, leading edge, but it can be difficult um, when you're factoring in the bill of materials to to pick forward a little bit on the on the components. For companies who aren't as forward thinking at times or maybe have didn't do this when they've launched um, and then they hit a sunset or an upgrade. Um, what is is there anything that they can really do at that point or or how do they kind of handle that or what advice can people kind of take from that um there's very little support from the people okay. that end up sunsetting those networks um okay. and most of the contracts and support and sla doesn't cover something like that it's covering just kind of like while it's available this is what it will do 
Um, so it's not saying like we're gonna agree. Nobody, nobody's gonna keep the lights on because your your contract, uh, you know, was five right. years and they only plan to to have three G running for three years, right? That's a very big decision a carrier is making. Um, and we're obviously talking a lot about cellular IoT here, and that's mostly where sun setting is is most impacted. But yeah. um, you can roll trucks, right? That's that's the kind of um, a colloquial term is like you have to go out there and physically replace the devices. Either you're replacing the whole entire package and the product, and you can you know sell a new product cycle to your customer, or the customer is upset and you're going to try to swap over a SIM card to you know a network that is available at that time, or you need to think really creatively and you need to even set up a private network that can cover um, that thing that you're that you're you okay. were doing. So. Cool. And you mentioned 5G a second ago. So how does um, how do you see the rollout of 5G impacting IoT deployments? Um, like right now, a lot of the um, low powered wide area networks are very much 4G based, like LTEM and the IoT. Those are all um, pre release 17 technologies so far. So the 3GPP spec is is basically built around 4G concepts. Um, 5G, obviously, things are going to get faster. Things are going to get more efficient. Just like any kind of um, technology, like, like with processors every year, they get, you know, 10, 20% better and they get, mm -hmm. um, you know, much more power efficient with, um, that performance per watt ratio sure. networks also get more efficient over time because a lot of the chips that they're using to deploy those networks, because of a lot of the spectrum, um, and software optimizations that are being made, they're being iterated over time, but in 5g, it's kind of like, um, and in, 4G to 3G, it's it's kind of a 10x. It's not you know an iterative improvement when it happens. Um, so when the 5G equivalents of NBIoT and LTEM come out for kind of machine sensors, it'll be very powerful for um, IoT devices. In the things that are not doing just kind of sensor data, um, you know SCADA type um, okay. um, things, um, 5G is kind of already having an impact, like connected car. Um, compute at the edge, uh, drones, mm -hmm. things that are um, now able to to do processing off device, even in some scenarios. Um, so 5G is having an impact uh, more so right now on the high payload, larger data use cases, mm. um, where one device is using a lot of consumption to visually position itself, right. as opposed to just sending an IP address or a um, you know a GPS address a lot more efficiently. So cool. Okay. And um, so outside of just the, the, the sunsetting and the upgrading of these networks, are there other connectivity challenges that may tie into these types of, uh, in, like in the same line of thinking that companies need to be um, paying attention to, whether it's around the redundancy, poor availability, latency, things like that, like anything that really sticks out to you that should be a focus as well? Yeah, I think um, like redundancy is one of the big ones you just, you just hit on. If you can possibly build a solution that is able to access more than one radio network at a time, Right, a lot of things we're talking about are radio network side changes. So it's how mm -hmm. the device is connecting to the tower. Behind that tower, there's a whole data tunnel that has to happen. And um, those data centers, um, picking partners, picking solutions that can take advantage of as many data centers as possible, it's very important. So that means a lot of um, you know not limiting yourself by an MVNO type solution. Sure. Um, but utilizing kind of native networks, um, which I yeah could talk forever about, but, um, <laughs> with, uh, with redundancy, that's really important. Um, when it comes to IOT, because if you, I mean, not everybody can ship a device with kind of two modems in it, mm -hmm. um, one for at and one for T-Mobile and one for maybe a third for Verizon. But if you can architect your solution, um, to maybe use one larger, more capable modem and a programmable layer, like something Teal can offer, right. um, that's awesome. We're also seeing like hybrid approaches where um, cellular is a lower cost per uh, message transmission uh, mm -hmm. than satellite, but they still want to have satellite included as a backup layer. Okay. Um, so even spreading the risk out across um, RF technologies, that's that's a, a smart move too. Fantastic. Last question before I let you go here. Um, what are, what types of companies really face the most challenges when we're talking about network upgrades and sunsets? Is there a particular use case, particular industry, particular type of company that feel like um, should be paying attention to this a bit more than others? Mm, I think uh, the ones that have the most uh, trouble with it are the ones that are most aggressive about the bill materials up front because they're okay. the ones that um, are doing like a very high scale of devices. 
And so they're trying to optimize every single component. So if you're just doing like, you know, a GPS tracker um, and it's used in something like an industrial use case for the energy grid, that means that there's an expectation that thing is going to stay online very long. You have um, kind of accountability to taxpayers as far as how long it's going to last and how many product cycles you can um, enforce on your on your solution. Um, you're also probably deployed in many, many more nodes than something that's, um, you know, maybe onesies, twosies. Like, right. I, if you can imagine how many trash cans there are in a in a uh, city compared to, you know, how many helmets get used. It, I would say the machine devices, the ones that are really remote and in large quantities, are the ones that needs to need to think the most about um, redundancy. They need to think the most about sunsets and planning for that and accounting for that. Yep. as well as just anything that's critical infrastructure. That's something that's especially in 2022 becoming more and more important critical infrastructure and supply chain. Right, um, right. Yeah, yeah def definitely important. Um, for our audience out there who wants to maybe um, engage with you, follow up, kind of elaborate and talk a little further about maybe this topic or topics related to this, what's the best way they can reach out and maybe stay in touch with everything going on over at Teal? Yeah, LinkedIn is good. Um, we have a, a pretty good LinkedIn Um um, we post kind of daily blog posts about the industry, about IoT solutions in general. Um, also, if anybody's listening and wants to reach out to me personally, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, we have a Twitter, but it doesn't have many followers yet. So <laughs> I don't know. Twitter's not really big for uh, for enterprise mm -hmm. IoT sure. solutions yet, but um, definitely on the cloud side. So Fantastic. Well, Robbie, thanks again for your time. It's been great to kind of have you share your expertise on this topic, which I know is a pretty popular one. So really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the Ask IoT video series. I hope you found a lot of value in it. If you did, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps others find it and make sure that you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, if you have any questions or topics that you would like us to cover in this series, please leave them in the comments or shoot us an email at hello at iotforall.com. Other than that, thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.